let us uh, get uh, started on today's class on uh, causal loop diagram. We introduced uh, very basic concepts on system thinking and system dynamics and characterize that in this course we are going to be looking at the dynamic behavior of systems, looking at causal loop modeling and then stock and flow diagrams to understand accumulations uh, and thinking endogenously. These are four concepts we discussed as basics for system dynamics uh, modeling. Uh, since the uh, underlying theme will be to look at uh, things that we, uh, evolve over time that is a dynamic behavior. We will uh, we will be starting with the one of the first pillars of that which is the causal loop uh, modeling. So, let me introduce you to that. So, causal loop diagram. So, basic idea here is the causal loop diagram is nothing but a visual representation of the cause and effect relationship between various elements of system forming feedback loops that is all shortly set on the board. The purpose of this CLD is threefold. One is to conceptualize the problem, understand what it is about and communicate with others that is the first and last point. And the key idea is to capture the hypothesis about the causes of dynamics, understand what are the variables in the system, see how they are linked with each other and through that visual representation see how we can explain how the system is evolving over time. So, that is the entire idea of this developing this causal loop diagram. In that sense, it is slightly different concept because this one of the first course is looking at the actual modeling of a any system. How do you identify the variables? How do you identify the links? And once you establish those relations, then we can later study how to come up with the equations underlying the system. So, first is just to identify relationships between the various variables within a system. CLDs or causal loop diagrams, uh, CLDs in short, nothing but. Uh, consists of variables connected by causal links or arrows, it is not very difficult to visualize, we just have an x uh, which is affecting y or x influences y as we read it, the variable at the end of the arrow or the x is independent variable and y is a dependent variable, there is nothing, um, it is kind of uh, straightforward there and the arrows show the direction of causation. So, we can illustrate with very simple uh, examples. So, uh, for example, you can identify variables such as say births and population or deaths and population. Here we can say okay, birth influences population, deaths also influences population, we could. So, we want to read it as births influence the population, deaths also influence the population here. And we can construct many such uh, examples like uh, production affects inventory, sales also affects the inventory. To elaborate on that causal link, we can associate it with the link polarity. We use the symbol plus or minus, plus indicates it is a strengthening and minus indicates it is a opposing or S can stand for same direction, go for the opposite direction. So, let me uh, go back with that idea to the same example. Here, what we want to do is we want to visually represent how the births affects the population. As more births happen, the population increases. So, as more births happen, population is also going to increase. So, it is in the same direction. We indicate it by a symbol plus against the causal link, yeah, by the plus here on the causal link. Again, deaths 
as more deaths happen the population falls down as more deaths happen the population falls down right so as deaths increases the population falls down so that we can indicate by a minus sign against the head of the arrow so this gives us an idea that okay as deaths increases the population falls down or births increases the population increases so we just see simple concepts we can establish a nice causal map of various problems that we can look at so we can go back to this example now as more production happens the inventory on hand should increase correct so that we can indicate it by a plus and as sales happen and inventory decreases so sales increases my inventory is going to decrease so i'm going to put a minus sign against sales and inventory this is a very very simple example on plus and minus so we can as more population occurs more births occur yeah we can do that so we can put an to indicate that we can close the loop by adding this population at birth and have a plus sign here so we can reconstruct the similar thing will happen with deaths also so we can extend this idea simply here let us write it births population deaths as more births happen the population increases so same direction let us use the symbol plus as more population is there more births will also occur so direction is still the same so we will put a plus as more population is there we can expect more deaths to be there right the share the share the number of deaths as population increases the deaths can increase and as more deaths are there the population is supposed to come down more people die or more what are the population of whatever uh, community or species you are looking at that population has to come down as more births happen population comes down you can indicate it by a minus sign right here so what we have just drawn is a it's not just the causal link we have even moved ahead and drawn a causal loop as you can see we we did a drawn our first simple feedback uh, causal loop here and there is loop here if you look at the loop on the left side here as births increase population is going to increase as population increases births further increases etc it right? keeps on going to increase in fact it will increase exponentially so this entire loop is what we called as a reinforcing loop well if you look at population and deaths as population increases more deaths happen and more deaths happen population decreases at some point it is it can reach some sort of a equilibrium can be expected there so this Uh, loop is called as a balancing loop so there are two types of loops one which we can expect an ever increasing behavior uh, influence of births on the population and as population increase deaths can increase which kind of limits the growth of the population so that loop is called as a balancing loop examples are to work suppose we have two variables just say x affecting y we can have various kind of relationships just to put a numerical sense of things because we are used to that suppose we take the first case let's say x affects y and the relation we give as x is equal to to so y equal to 2 times x right very simple example suppose in this case 
was the value of x is 1, y is 2, as x increases, as x increases here from 1 to 2, y is also going to increase to 4, as this goes to 3, this goes to 6, etcetera. But as y comes down, see x comes down, say from uh, from 1 it comes to 0 0.5, this is going to come to L1, right. As this comes to 0 0.25, this comes to 0 0.5, etcetera. Still, that is a decrease. So, if you can take this as a reference point. So, initially you started with x as 1 and y take the value of 2. So, as x increased from 1 to 2 or and beyond, y will also continues to increase from its reference point of 2. If x falls below from 1, y also falls below 2. So, the direction of movement is the same. So, if direction of movement is the same, that is the case we indicate this link with a plus sign. Let us take, uh, I do not know why I am using different colors, but it is fine. Um, let us say, let us do x by 2. Uh, again, let us take the same reference point. So, when x is 1, y is going to be 0 0.5. So, when x increases to 2, y will take a value 1, x is 4, y is going to value take value 2. So, as x increases, y continues to increase. Again, this is our reference point. Let us see, as x falls down, so instead of 1, it becomes 0 0.5. Uh, so, y will be? Point two five, right. So as x falls, y also continues to fall. So we are just it is still multiplying by constant, right? Instead of multiplying by two, you are multiplying point five. Still multiplying by constant. The direction of movement is the same. So we continue to represent it by a plus sign. So x influence y, the positive direction. Right. So these kind of things can lead to some tricky behaviors. That's why I explained it. So let's take up a the third case, say x influences y, let us take y in this case equal to 1 over x, okay. Let us again take the same uh, reference point as uh, 1, y is 1, that is the same reference point. So, as x increases 2, y becomes 0.5, x goes to 3, y becomes uh, 0.33, x becomes 4, y becomes 0.25. Here you can clearly see as x is increasing, y is decreasing, correct. Now, let us see what happens in opposite direction as x becomes 0.5, y becomes 2, and so on. You can expand the case. Okay, just to make it understand. So, here it was relative movement. So, to indicate this kind of relation as x increases, y increases. So, then we do a plus sign or x decreases, y decreases, it is a plus sign, same direction. Other option where x increases, y decreases, or x decreases, y increases, it is an opposite direction or opposing, we indicate it by a minus sign. This is a very simple artifact of us using the thumbs, it is a simple trick, but if your thumbs are in the same direction, that means a positive link. So, x increases, y increases, or x decreases, y decreases, then it is plus sign, if x decreases, y increases, opposite direction, then it is a minus sign, okay. So, here plus and minus are just symbolic, it is nothing to do with addition or subtraction, it is just symbolic to indicate the direction of causation, okay. So, that is simple idea. Just to go over what we did, uh, if you want a formal definition, if all other things being equal, a change in causal variable 
generates a change in the same direction in affected variable relative to its prior value. That is the kind of formal definition of it, but if you want to get a feel of it, it just says that if x increases, then y increases above what would have otherwise been, or if x decreases, then y decreases below what it would have otherwise been. So, that is what it simply means as a plus sign. So, in this course, we will be using this symbol plus, but there are some books and papers which use the symbol s instead of plus, but that is very, very few. Most uh, the general convention nowadays is just use the symbol plus. Or minus, if all things being equal, a change in the causal variable generates a change in the opposite direction of the aff affected variable related to its prior value. That is, as x increases, y decreases below what it otherwise have been, then we use the uh, negative sign or a minus sign. 